So while this seems really, really simple, these kind of three steps, it wasn't necessarily intuitive for me to know what to do after paying off my car. Welcome to my channel. My name is Octavia and this is The Edit by OC, where I talk about fashion, overall health and wellness, as well as lifestyle. So today's video is a little bit outside of the box for me, um, but I wanted to bring this information to you guys because I think it's really, really important. Okay, Octavia from the future here. It's about 7.30 a.m. I am having my tea, doing some journaling, and I was thinking, okay, Maybe I should do another channel in the future. Because I'm really passionate about finance, mindset, um, productivity, like optimizing life. So maybe I should do another channel in the future or should I do all of that on one channel? So let me know what you guys think. Also, if you have any other tips on what you should do when you pay off your car that I didn't mention, please leave them in the comments below. This is all about sharing information, making sure that people have resources and things that we need, right? So go ahead and share your information down in the comment section. And then also leave me any thoughts on two channels, one channel, what do you guys think? kind of falls into my category of adulting box. You know, those things that we learn along the journey of adulting that we didn't know before. So let's go ahead and get into it. I recently paid off my car. I purchased the car in 2017. Um, it's just a little Jeep Patriot, but it's, it's mine. Um, so I purchased the car in 2017. Had a 72 month lease on the car, um, but I was able to pay it off a little bit early. Um, so instead of paying it off in July 2023, I paid it off September 2022. So there were a few things that I learned that I needed to do or could do or should do um, after paying off my car that would be in my best interest. So I wanted to go ahead and share those things that I learned with you guys. So the first thing that I learned after paying off my car is that I needed to go ahead and call the bank. So I wanted to call the bank that I had the car loan through uh, in order to make sure that one, we're square on all of the payments, and two, I wanted to ensure that my title would be put into the mail. So um, I went ahead and did that. I called the bank, um, let them know that I had submitted my final payment, and after reviewing the information on the login portal, I recognized, oh, I actually submitted an extra payment by accident and um, there was a little bit of an overpayment. So at the time that I set up my car loan, I also set up automatic payments to go to the bank. In order to pay it off a little bit earlier, I actually would pay a little bit more each month uh, so that amount that I would pay would go toward the principal on my loan. So uh, in paying a little bit more each month, I was able to pay off the vehicle, but that also meant that I overpaid on my final payment. Um, so in talking to her over the phone, she's like, oh, you actually overpaid, so you'll be receiving a check in the mail. So a very small check, but worth it nonetheless to go ahead and give them a call to make sure that everything was square. In addition, we talked about my last payment uh, because I went in, I was a little bit eager to pay for my card to pay it off. So I submitted my own payment manually and then I had the automatic payment coming out on the same day and I did not realize it. So she let me know that that last payment where I overpaid would actually be reversed. So we're able to get that all squared away. I also asked her, like I, like I mentioned, when my title would go into the mail. So the title basically is the confirmation that I own the vehicle outright. So um, she confirmed that the title would be sent to me in the mail within the next week or so. Um, sure enough, the title came in the mail. So those are the first two things that I did when paying off my, my car. So the last thing that I did after paying off my car was to go ahead and call the dealership and ask them to cancel my gap insurance. So gap insurance is basically guaranteed asset protection. This is essentially um, a type of insurance that you can put onto a vehicle, um, things that are not paid for outright. Um, if something were to happen to it, I wouldn't necessarily have been responsible for the full 
cost of the vehicle. So I wanted to go ahead and cancel that gap insurance because I paid off my car a little bit early. So in canceling the gap insurance, I had to go ahead and call the dealership. They asked me for a few bits of information. The first one being um, my vehicle's VIN number. They wanted to also know uh, or have proof that I paid off the car from the bank. Um, so they asked me to send that information over via email. They also asked me how many miles I had on my car. So I sent all that information over. There was a form that I also needed to go ahead and sign. So I signed that, sent it over to the, to the dealership, and now I'm waiting to hear back from them in terms of how much I could receive back from now canceling the gap insurance that I no longer need because the vehicle is paid off and it's mine. So while this seems really, really simple, these kind of three steps, it wasn't necessarily intuitive for me to know what to do after paying off my car and also making sure that you know my all of my accounts were reconciled making sure that I would receive my title in the mail as well as canceling anything that I don't need and potentially getting money back so I'm still waiting to hear back from the dealership to know exactly how much uh, could be returned to me because I no longer need that gap insurance um, but these are things that are not intuitive but wanted to share that information with you and hopefully it helps and I'll see you guys next time Bye.